So welcome back everybody. This is part, I believe three in the pool series and in a very important part that we need to talk about, which is pool safety fencing. Whether you have to pull permits for an above ground pool in your area or not, not all areas require that. Chances are either your homeowner or if you have property insurance or both are still gonna require some sort of safety fence in order to keep your insurance up to date. So you need to pay attention to this no matter what you need to do in your area in order to build your pool. I also found a very affordable fence that is also removable and appears to qualify for most of the rules that I'm seeing. And that is awesome because not everybody wants to spend more on a fence, thousands of dollars, than they did their pool. And in my particular case, I want a removable fence because, well, I need to access things. We're eventually gonna start building a deck and I need to be able to take this in and out. A removable fence makes by far the most sense for me and it's the most budget friendly. So let's quickly talk about the rules that I'm gonna show you how I installed this fence. It can be installed many different ways, where I got it from, what you should expect to pay. So here in Florida, the rules vary greatly. We have a Florida building code rules for pools. And then there's another government safety agency that has additional rules on top. It gets very confusing. So whenever you go to do your pool, I suggest you go to your local building office, see if first of all, if you even need to pull any kind of permits and then try to get a checklist of their rules. What I did is I pulled that checklist from a couple of down south counties in Florida, which seem to have much more stringent rules than anything up here. And I started reading through that checklist. Now they give you an ASTM standard, which you can go look at for mesh fencing if you decide to go this route right here. So chain link fencing in a lot of places still qualifies, although I'm hearing from some local pool builders, chain link fence is starting to become a little bit of a problem because of the potential climb aspect of it. But I do believe that it is still allowed. Also, depending on your type of fencing, it can't have any sort of large openings in it. You'll hear some of the rules refer to four inch wide openings if it's like a permanent steel fencing. That applies to any sort of railing whatsoever. That is a four inch sphere cannot fit through or a baby's head. But typically whenever you're looking at your pool fencing, the gaps are a whole lot tighter. You're starting to see half inch qualifications in certain types of fencing when you start reading those rules. Since chain link is ridiculously expensive, steel fences, custom built fences are so expensive as well, we're not even really gonna dig into those today. What I did is I read up the rules on mesh safety fencing. I do wanna say real quick, believe it or not, the rules do allow removable fencing just like this. They also allow an entire pool cover to qualify to where you don't even need fencing, although those are very expensive as well. And I'll throw up a quick picture right here. There is a bolt on type of railing that you can put on the pool cap to get you up to the required 48 inches. So here's another thing we need to talk about. If your above ground pool is above the ground and you buy like say a 54 inch pool like us, as long as there's 48 inches of wall exposed and above, your pool wall can actually qualify as your safety fencing there. So keep that in mind. Although whenever I talked to my insurance agent, she was very adamant that we needed some sort of 48 inch fence, even though the rules state the pool wall can qualify. So you better check with your insurance as well. Safety mesh fencing is where we're gonna go. So the rules do state 48 inches tall, which this fencing right here is. And by the way, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, which is a company called Vivor. I've worked with them for years. They offer every product under the sun that you can imagine from kitchen supplies, house supplies, tools, equipment, tractor equipment, pool supplies, things such as that. And they did provide me with this safety fence right here. It's very affordable, very reasonable. I'll put a link down in the description as well as I'll put a discount code as well if you're interested in it. So the rules do state 48 inches tall for a mesh safety fence, which this Vivor fencing right here does qualify for that. Now there's some more rules we need to talk about. The fencing they say can't be no more than one inch off the ground. That's very easy to adjust with this fencing right here. Then there's certain impact safety standards, which is almost impossible for you and I to really measure. I guess there could be a tester that say an inspector or an insurance agent could come out with. Now you're about to watch video of me installing this fence, but I do wanna let you know this fence is also really built for an above ground pool as well, especially one that's got a concrete patio or concrete deck because the pool comes with these little sleeves right here. What do you do is you drill a hole down into your concrete deck, you slide these in. They also come with caps, so if you wanna remove your fence, you can decorative cap this so it doesn't fill up with dirt, debris, or water. And then you slide your pole, your post, right down into this. They have a four inch long steel shaft on the bottom. That's also very important. The rules state that you must be in the ground three inches or more. Well, this looks like about four inches that you'll be down. So you'll get a nice sturdy fence 
sense, especially if you do this in concrete. The other thing I really like they included is a template. So you could lay this out on the concrete, you know, to mark out and drill a hole here. You can go over and drill a hole here as well, and you can use this to lay out. Put these in, start sliding your fence in. You'll see this end has a double hole. That's for where two pieces of a fence are gonna meet up together. So this fencing also qualifies for the depth requirements of the rules that I'm reading for pools. The other very important requirement is for your gate latch. This is a very basic latch right here that just slides down in. The rules state, and here's where it gets really interesting. The Florida Building Code states that your latch must be 48 inches high, whereas the additional government safety rules I'm seeing here in Florida that not all local municipalities require you to follow, by the way. But the Florida State Agency rules states that, well, a latch should be 54 inches high. That just makes no sense to me because, well, it's got a 48 inch re fence requirement. However, there's an exception to that rule. This latch is on the backhand side behind the gate, and the rule states as long as there's not more than a half inch gap which some of these gaps are I'm going to be honest they're pushing that rule and you're covered by 18 inches around basically a child can't get their hand through a gap and access the latch like you physically have to reach over like this one well that is an exception to the rule you don't have to have your latch so high that a child can't reach it because it takes a human height to be able to reach over and behind this fence. There's no way a small child could reach over and do that. Now again, depending on what your local county rules may state, you may have to go with the 54 inch requirement, the 48, or again, the exception to the rule is 18 inches of full coverage around where the latch is located. Here's another very important rule. It states that the fence must be at least two foot away from the pool wall. I guess that's so if somebody were to ever climb up on the fence, they would hopefully fall behind the fence, not fall directly in water and potentially drown. So make sure whenever you're measuring out for your fence that you're gonna be a minimum of two feet away from the pool or further out. Now that brings me to an important point. How do you know how long of fence to get? That's the cool thing about the Vivor's fence system right here. It comes in 12 foot sections and you can put in as many four foot gates as you want to. So this is a modular and buildable system. You can buy it all the way up to 96 foot long packages, which is what I got and then add your fence to it or just buy individual 12 foot sections. So here's the way I calculated mine out. We have a 27 foot pool and I knew I was gonna wind up with a hundred foot of fencing and that's what I needed. So how I figured that out is 27 foot pool, that's 13 and a half foot either direction. I know I need to go at least two feet out again to qualify for that rule. So that's 15 and a half foot one direction, 15 and a half in the other. And I wanted to give myself an additional buffer on top of that just to make for sure that I didn't get too close. So long story short, I just said I'm gonna go two and a half foot this way, two and a half foot all the way around the pool. So we all remember from school, you know, pi r squared or two pi r that people often refer to. So you take the radius of the pool, mine's 13 and a half feet, plus I knew I wanted to go another two and a half feet out. You times that by pi 3.14 and then you'll double that. And that actually comes out to slightly over 100 feet. So I knew the 96 foot fencing plus the four foot gate right here was gonna be perfect for my needs. So save that calculation, it's really helpful if you have a round pool. So the cool thing is I wish I had gotten two gates now, but I can always buy another one and add it in over here. So I've got one gate right here. I'll come around, unlatch that. It folds out and that gives me access to my stairs right now. You'd always have to have your stairs blocked off for a pool. I wish I had put another gate over here at my pool pump and equipment, but here's the cool thing about this fence. And let me show you how it goes together right here because I can still get quick and easy access to that equipment over there. Now you can see I still have a little bit of slop right here in this fencing. That's the beautiful thing about this. I can just move my stake back out. I'm gonna go around and tighten everything up and we can take some of the uh, looseness out, tension everything up. But I ran the fence behind my post so I can still get access to my timer. And I ran all of my pool equipment behind the fencing. Even though my local rules that I found don't state that I have to have equipment behind the fencing, I had a couple of viewers state that in their area, it is required. What our rules do state here though, is your pool equipment has to be reasonably far away from the pool that a child couldn't climb up on it, gain access to the pool and actually fall in. And I've got my sand filter several feet away from the pool. I do believe it qualifies for that reasonably safe distance, but go ahead and put your safety fence up to block the equipment and now I know I'm covered. Should I need to get in behind here and clean the skimmer basket out and all, this is what I like about this fencing. All 12 foot sections snap together with a stainless clasp and because these just stake right in the ground, I can take this out at any time, get behind my fence, 
excess valves, the skimmer, it's really quick and easy. You can't do that with a chain link fence or anything else. And that two and a half foot that I've left all around the pool, I can easily walk around the pool if I need to grab a pool toy or anything else. Or I can just go to any section of fencing on that side of the pool, snap them apart just like this, pull them out, go in, and then everything just slides right back in. All right, so let me cut to a clip real quick and show you what I actually cut and used to install these. I bought half inch PVC conduit. This is electrical conduit. It's actually rated for, well, outside use and it's UV resistant. And that hole, although a little loose, is very close to the shaft size on the bottom side of the fencing and it slides right in. I cut these in one foot length to put into the ground to make sure there was good stability here. That is not required when mounting in concrete using these adapters right here you're gonna get a much more sturdy install in concrete. And if I had it to do all over again, which I will be redoing this, I'm probably gonna do 16 inch stakes because my ground's still a bit soft from digging out the pool. Although this is quite sturdy for what it is. So you can see, I went around and just drove these stakes in every so often. You can use the provided template that they give you. Or what I did is I just stuck the post in the ground, put some tension on it, made sure that I was getting my fence nice and tight. That made an indention in the ground, pulled it back out, drove down my stake, and then slid the pole right down in there. And then I did want to show you, here is that snap on all these sections of fence. So I can enter the fence anywhere I need to. You can see through the mesh really well, so it doesn't obstruct the view like I was thinking that it was going to. And if I'm being honest, I'm not planning on leaving this fence up all the time. So in order to qualify for your insurances, potentially for building inspection or pool inspection from the building department, if that's required in your area, you're going to have to have some sort of safety fence that meets the requirements that I just told you. But the rules actually allow for removable tops, removable fencing in case you don't want that eyesore there. The insurance company, for example, is just going to see that you have something that could take the liability and risk out of the situation. Say you're having a party and people coming over and small children are going to be around. You as the homeowner are responsible for anything on your property, including that pool, and you need to have some sort of safety barrier and fence up. And you're taking that liability on yourself anytime you take it down, but the option is there. There's tons of time that you're going to want to take a fence down to maybe pressure clean around the pool, clean the deck, have access to work on it again like us we're going to open this fence up now i can build my deck and this can be modular and removable to get out of my way for all this work and expansion that we're going to be doing here but in the meantime this allows you to go ahead and close out your permit if you have one or call your insurance company and get that inspection some of them are going to require that you send pictures in showing proof of this some are actually going to physically send an inspector out that's going to check some of this stuff and i want to remind everybody if you happen to have a larger piece of property like us i've been talking to my insurance agent and say you have well farm insurance or property insurance not house insurance but things covering your outbuildings liability in your property, whatever that may be, you also have to notify them. Typically, they also require a 48-inch fence in order for you to maintain your property insurance. It's not just your homeowner's insurance, so keep that in mind. All right, well, a huge thanks to Vivor for sending this out. They've been such a blessing to the channel, always answering the call whenever we have things like this. It really helps us to continue to make videos and DIY projects and be able to make more of that type of content, saving us the money on things like this. And I'm going to be honest with you, good luck going 
anywhere else and finding 100 feet of pool fencing for, I believe it was 400 and something dollars. Now you have to add your gate and build your system how you want, but for 500 and something dollars. You're talking thousands upon thousands of dollars to do that with chain link fence or wrought iron if you get one built and have a company come in, or you can spend a little bit of your time and put one of these up for just a few hundred dollars. Then you can qualify, get to swimming, which is what you want to do. And by the way, if you don't happen to have a hammer drill, which is what you're going to need to drill out a hole large enough in concrete to install these, if you're doing it on a deck, don't forget your local rental companies, Handy Tool Rentals, United Rentals, companies like that typically always have hammer drills in stock. You could rent one for the morning or for the day go put in all your ground anchors and you're in business. You're good to go. All right. Thank you all for watching. This is one step closer to allowing us to build out our home and have just our dream home here. We've got our pool going. We can use it. We can swim in it. And now we can focus on building that deck. Meanwhile, while we're keeping things nice and safe, anytime we have company, children, or anything else over here. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.